Hello, fellow Villa fans. Um, just a little video, really, um, as to what's happened today. Don't worry, my eyes are, do look like shit, but I haven't been crying. I just have chronic hay fever. Uh, sat in bed, a bit lazy. I was going to go down to uh, the office, but I thought I'll stay in bed. Um, crazy day. I was contacted. Hello. Uh, this is for Villa fans. So if you're just going to come on and talk about, you know, ha, 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 great, fuck Villa, fantastic, well done, congratulations, have a good gloat. But it's a bigger debate, really, about football fans generally. Uh, over the last 10 years, I think the proudest things I've done, whether it be radio or television or things like Periscope, is to shed a little bit of a light on ownership. Um, I remember having a conversation with uh, Mr. Royston, Blackpool, didn't answer a question on one of the shows I did at TalkSport. And he said, we've got money, we're putting it into Blackpool, everything's all right, everything's rosy in the garden. And it turned out to be bullshit. And that was on live radio. And so, before then, and ever since then, Coventry City fans, Birmingham City, Blackpool, Blackburn, um, Leeds United fans, Charlton, I've tried to take an interest in um, in fans that don't feel they've got a voice. I mean, for me, it's very simple. Football is, is our right. It's our sport. Um, the notion that, that we have been so brainwashed in English football to think that the only way that our club can succeed and compete is by having uh, a sugar daddy is nonsense. Um, German clubs have 51% fan ownership and still compete very well domestically and in Europe. Um, so we have to either change our mindset or we just keep waiting for the next owner to come, one after the next after the next. So I just wrote on Twitter about 20 minutes ago um, in response to a Villa fan that said, um, well, what's the what's the solution? If Dr. Gia goes, I'll tell you what what I know, by the way, in a minute. Um, but this is just opinion. Um, if Dr. Gia goes, uh, then this guy, Peter Freund, going to come in, and he's going to be a great owner because he's got money. Well, we had this conversation eight years ago. Randy Lerner came in as the guy that drinks a pint, the quiet man of football. He's a billionaire. His dad passed him a fortune for MBNA credit cards and he spoke very well. Villa fans were happy. I wrote at the time, be careful what you wish for, what's he going to be like, doesn't know anything about football. Surrounded himself with people that didn't know about football. That's the, that's the one link with a lot of these people. Have money, have good intentions, surround themselves with um, wrong ones. Fawaz at Nottingham Forest, another one, surrounded himself with with agents and people that didn't understand the game. Why do they do that? Those are the people that rock up and basically say, hey, Mr. Billionaire, invest in this club and I'll run the club for you. I've been at Aberdeen, I've been at Everton, I've been at here, I've been at there. Um, and what they do is that they essentially sideline. You'll notice that many, many club legends at a lot of these clubs are sidelined and not spoken to because these new people that rock into football clubs are very scared of them and their voice. So anyway... For my club, Aston Villa, I want to see it sustainable. For my kids, for my grandchildren, for their great-grandchildren, great for the next 50, 60, 140 years, my club, uh, just over 143 years, has been in existence. And for 70% of that 140-odd years, we've been in the top half of the top division without a billionaire, without a sugar daddy. The only times that my club have had sugar daddies... We've struggled at the bottom of the division, of the top division, and we've been in the championship. So if anybody can present me with an argument of 135 years of normal ownership and five or six years of sugar daddies, that one is better than the other, you're right. A normal owner that understands the value of the sport, the value of the club as proper people coming in in proper roles, is far superior to a billionaire coming in and employing whoever, director of football, um, CEO, that don't know what they're talking about. So let's get to what I know today. You can cut this, edit it,
people, uh, Birmingham Mail has a bit of a fascination with taking my words at the minute, so let's see, so what I know. Um, it is my belief and my understanding from, from three different sources at Aston Villa. Um, all I'll say is, I know I'm right, and it'll be proven right in the coming days, proven right today, really. Um, that the owner of Aston Villa Football Club is very, very unhappy with several people at the football club as to where, um, and the reason why that is, is because, and this was reported in the Daily Mail, I don't read the Daily Mail, but I thought the reporting on this was very interesting. Theory one, that Keith Wyness was worried about the tax bill. The tax bill, he then wandered around lots of different people that he knew, minority, minority shareholders at Villa, and said, put up some money so we can pay the tax bill. The tax bill went unpaid, but there's been an agreement with uh, HMRC to pay it. That's theory one. That theory makes Keith Wyness comes across as a CEO that has the best interest of the club at heart and that he um, did everything to make sure this bill was paid. Theory two, the Daily Mail, Laurie Whitwell, local uh, reporter, which had the word, um, not allegedly, it had something else. The other alternative version of events, which I thought was quite funny. So basically, Laurie Whitwell of the Mail has taken verbatim what somebody who's presented him about Wyness being the knight in shining armour, and the second theory as bullshit, because you wouldn't write allegedly. But the second theory is, and all I'll say is, I think this may be very close to the truth, is that somebody in a responsible job at Aston Villa after not getting promoted, um, let's just say was sending messages to potential other owners that the club was up for sale. And um, the suggestion was, from my source, that um, fairly intimate um, financial details were expressed. Now, if I want to sell a car to you at, one thousand pounds but i'm asking for 1500 for it but my mate that's helping me sell the car goes to the seller and say well actually you'll probably you'll get it for 500 quid 600 quid he's desperate to that's really bad that's stabbing somebody in the back that's an employee that that dr gia has bought into the football club allegedly that is now um stabbing them in the back touting the club to other people. Now, I'll leave it for other people. Like I say, it's been reported that that was one side of the story in the mail and another. I, I, I know what I know. But it's, I'm not close enough to what goes on at Aston Villa to A, libel myself, or B, to be perfectly honest, in a World Cup week when I'm going to, uh, to Russia to get so involved in it when so many people have warned about Randy Lerner and then owners generally, fit for purpose, that it's actually now, it's not a case of gloating about being right. It's why so many people want to continue this cycle of shit owner, let's get another one, hoping that it's going to be Sheikh Mansour, the perception of which, of course, is that he's a great owner. Roman Abramovich, look what's happening recently. Can't get a visa, lives in Israel. Where's that going to leave Chelsea? We don't know. Is that the sustainable model for our football clubs? We're all football supporters that care about our clubs. So what do we want? Do we just want to wave our cocks about, excuse my French, and say we've got a billionaire owner and we've bought the Premier League, the Champions League, the Championship and the Kentucky Derby? Or do we want a football club where the Football Association and the Premier League basically put in fit and proper persons tests that Guarantee fans' rights, guarantee fan um, representation, or just anybody rocks up that's got money and buys a club. It can be a fucking absolute lunatic, but buys your football club and runs them into the ground. I don't want that to happen to Leeds. I don't want it to happen to Manchester City, Manchester United, Liverpool, Stockport, anybody. 
But fans seemingly wanted that cycle to continue. So I often get, what's the alternative? Well, Borussia Dortmund get 80,000 punters in their stadium, competing Europe fairly regularly. I've had some fantastic players that all earn big money. But the fans own 51% of the club. So if the fans own 51% of the club, that means the fans have the biggest say in the football club. Ticket prices, prices of a hot dog. If I go to Villa, I have no say over anything. Anything. A programme, a hot dog, a ticket. Anything. And Villa fans are happy with that. Oh, but Collymore, we can't do anything. Bullshit. That's a fucking lie. And it is the lazy, inept attitude of all of us, as particularly English football fans, that the money and the gravy train is now so great that we will not be happy until we have a sugar daddy or a billionaire that comes in and willy waves alongside Abramovich and Sheikh Mansour. That's the reality of it. Because if it was the reality was caring about a football club, and making sure it was sustainable for your children and grandchildren, you would demand that your football club that your grandparents and great-grandparents went to would be sustainable for the next 40, 50 years. And at Aston Villa, I can't guarantee that. Tony Gia sells to Peter Freund. Peter Freund sells to fucking... What's his name? Job Steve Jobs' his grandson in 30 years' time. He fucks it up, passes it on to Sheikh, somebody or other. Does really well, gets Villa into the Premier League, gets them to win the league. Dies, sells it to another shit owner. That's not what it's about. So, for Aston Villa, I know for a fact the next week or so is going to be... Um, I would imagine quite bad, because Dr. Gere has sacked Keith Wyness. Um... We don't know if there's an offer on the table from this Peter Freund. I went on Peter Freund's Instagram account and he follows Aston Villa, but he's, he's recently followed like three Aston Villa fan pages. A billionaire following like three ropey Aston Villa fan pages. If that's where you're getting your information from about Aston Villa, that would be a bit of a worry in itself. Anyway, um... On this occasion, I think that Dr. Gia's only crime is naivety and possibly surrounding himself with people that many journalists, Villa fans that did their due diligence, ask questions about. For example, ask Evertonians about Keith Wyness. He's not, they're not au fait with him at all. Not a fan of him and some of his plans that he had for Everton. Um, and I asked Everton fans that question. It was resoundingly negative before he walked through the door. Um, all I want is to go and watch my football club, buy a season ticket when I can go and watch the club, uh, for my kids to be able to watch it in 20, 30, 40 years time. And here I am at wherever time it is in the morning, genuinely worried that the, that the epitome of a football club, probably alongside Everton in terms of top flight longevity we still i think second longest represented in the in the in the english top division even having been out of it for three years not knowing whether that club is going to exist in a week's time that's not right that's not stan collymore ranting coming coming across as unreasonable chatting breeze chatting bollocks denying fans enjoyment that's just not right a football club that was founded 142 years ago, 143, somebody will say it's 143 or 4, off the top of my head at the minute, um, spent 70% of its time in the top flight of English football and it might not exist next week. Doesn't make sense. Uh, to all Villa fans, wish you all the very best wherever you are. Um, I know I'm the black sheep of the family, so to speak, and many of you don't like me, but I really couldn't give a fuck. I'm as much of a Villa fan as you are. I love my club as much as you do. And I think that in the future, forget Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs, 
our club needs to go in a direction that is sustainable. That would be 51% bound by all of us. That would then invite any billionaire that passes the fit and proper person's test to put 49% in so that everybody's happy. Sustainability he can make a few quid. We get to keep our football club for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And we get to pass our wonderful football club that has given us so many great memories uh, onto the next generation. Um, to fans of other clubs, Coventry, Birmingham, uh, Blackpool, uh, Leeds United, Blackburn Rovers, Charlton Athletic, uh, Coventry City, I've mentioned many times, stand in solidarity with you um, because you've gone through that kind of what's next are we going to have football clubs? Um, so I wish you all the very best in, uh, in hoping that your clubs get back on track. And I hope that all of us as football fans demand that sooner rather than later that we look around the world and look at other sustainable models for our great football clubs rather than a billionaire sugar daddy. It works for some. It doesn't work for most. Many clubs have had horrific experiences and now I'm feeling it, feeling it with mine. I wish Tony Shear all the best. I think he's been shit on from a height. Like I say, his only crime is naivety. He's been surrounded, in my opinion, by the wrong people, as was Randy Lerner. Let's not make the mistake three times on the trot. Up the villa and good night.